the other. Right. Good afternoon. A, a small but select band. Um, we could almost gather closely and I'll talk as individuals, and I'll happily do that. Um, my name is Stephen Adams. I'm general manager of BAFE. Don't ask me what BAFE stands for, because actually it's completely irrelevant. Uh, it spreads from a time when BAFE was involved in approving fire equipment, and we're not. We're about competencies, we're about the quality of companies who install and maintain fire alarms, and companies who maintain portable extinguishers, and soon a whole range of other things as well. So, uh, independent. We moved last year from Morton in Mar from Kingston, the Fire Industry Association offices, uh, to Morton in Marsh, and we are an entirely independent body, 25 years old, and we are dedicated to improving and maintaining quality standards in the fire protection industry. We had this strange expression that, that I wasn't very comfortable with at times, but actually can't think of anything better, which is that we are the keeper of the scrolls. We work with the industry and determine and define standards and schemes, and then we work with the industry, with certification bodies, with UCAS, to make sure that those standards are maintained. And when we come to develop new schemes, which I'll talk about in a little while, Again, we work with the industry to develop new schemes so that companies can genuinely say that they do, that they meet standards and that they have a genuine approval for what they do. And as I say, since this time last year, we're based at the Fire Service College at Morton in Marsh, uh, entirely independent of the industry. The reason for BAFE is that there has been no independent measure. The nearest similar organization to BAFE, I suppose, is what used to be Corgi and is now GasSafe. The advantage they have, if it is an advantage, is that they are a mandatory body. The government insists that everybody who installs uh, gas fitments in any sense as a mandatory requirement uh, is approved. But what CLG says, and this is a, a direct print from their own website, is that if you are a company, and now every end user company has a responsibility for ensuring that their fire protection is done properly. So the, uh, the person who is responsible within any property has to know that what they do, they're doing properly. And the only way they have of doing that they may well know companies, they may well have worked with companies for many years, but there is no obvious way in which the quality of that company and what they do and the technicians they employ, there's no way that that can be demonstrated unless they have some, thought, some sort of third party quality assurance. And that is what BASE provides with the industry. So a BAFE scheme provides a set of rules. They're sets of rules based around British standards, based around codes of practice, based around best practice. And we work with certification bodies and we work with UCAS, as I say, to generate those schemes. I'll talk a little while about new schemes that, that we are working on at the moment. And those have arisen out of the industry saying to us that we need new schemes and we need schemes that we can work with. And it comes out of CFOA, the Chief Fire Officers Association, and <coughs> the CLG and the insurance industry, those people who have a responsibility saying that we need appropriate schemes and we need schemes that can be properly certificated through UCAS. And then that people keep to the scheme rules. One of the things that has, has happened in um, pretty much as a response to us moving and, and, and setting up in Morton is that we have taken a lot more complaints 
and I'm delighted about that because it means that people are taking us seriously. There are companies who will use the BAFE logo when they're not entitled to, and we go after them. There are companies who are registered to one scheme and not to another, and we check up, and there's conspiracy, and there's cock up, and we, we sort that out. And there will be companies who don't maintain the scheme rules, and if a, an end user comes to us genuinely with a complaint, we will investigate it and we will either go through trading standards or we'll carry out our own complaints procedures and companies will be deregistered. And we have that happening at the moment because unless we do what our task is, which is to maintain the rules, then there's no reason why anybody should take a BAFE scheme seriously. We've just listed our 300th company. We're up to 305, probably a few more than that on the schemes for uh, maintaining fire alarm systems. Um, we've got just over 200 now for the scheme that uh, is for companies and their technicians who install and maintain portable fire extinguishers. And together with the other schemes we have, we are just about to kick over <coughs> the 600 uh, registered companies and obviously all of their branches. Um, in terms of size, we, we've got the very largest companies in the industry, who you will know. Um, I've never actually done the maths, but at least 60% of our registered companies employ less than 10 employees. So it's, it's not a pre-requirement that you're a large company. And the two schemes operate slightly differently. I'm, I'm going to concentrate because I envisaged at IFSEC this year, we'd be primarily talking about installers who might be interested in installing fire alarm systems. Um, but the portable extinguisher scheme works that the company itself has to have ISO 9000 through a UCAS accredited body based around the requirements of our scheme. When they have ISO 9000, it is then a requirement that all of their technicians who go out and maintain the portable extinguishers are assessed by BAFE assessors, have been trained properly, and we then monitor those technicians. You cannot be a BAFE approved technician unless you work for a BAFE approved company. You cannot be a BAFE approved company unless all of your technicians are approved. The SB203 scheme, which is the fire alarm scheme, works slightly differently. It's modular in the sense that you can gain approval for just the design of fire alarm systems, or commissioning, or installation, or maintenance. Most of the companies are, in, are approved to all four modules. And we work that through the certification bodies. You, you'll know many of them, BSI, NSI, SSAIB. And they are approved by UCAS and by us to go out and assess companies to the BAFE scheme standard. And when they've done that, that doesn't require ISO 9000, but it does require a controlled and monitorable quality management system. Many NSI Gold companies obviously have, all NSI Gold companies have ISO 9000, but you don't have to have it for this particular scheme. And then they will monitor that company on an annual basis. The other thing we do, which also generates funds, is that um, we provide the examinations initially just for uh, portable extinguisher technicians. They will be trained by a number of bodies, and for not all, but some of those bodies, we provide the examination process. So they will have a BAFE examination. And there are strong moves afoot, uh, because it, was, it is written into the British standard um, that the standard aims to have a national examination board and uh, there are strong moves afoot that BAFE will actually organize that together with the other bodies involved to provide a national examination body um, provisionally and initially for uh, technicians but that can extend out um, into wider areas of the fire protection industry. And if you want to find out who those companies are, go and have a look at our website. I apologize in advance for it, it's been hanging around for a while. It's not the best website, but it functions 
that will give you up-to-date lists of registered companies, and hopefully in a couple of months' time, we'll have one that's much more user-friendly and, and helpful and gives you more information. We're actually run by a council, which includes the Chief Fire Officers Association, the certification bodies, trade associations, CLG, building research establishment, health and safety executive, and others. So those are the organizations that came together to form BAFE and they have a strong input in terms of our direction and where we are going and what developments we have in place. So as I said, my intention here today was to concentrate on the SP203 scheme, which is primarily for companies who design, install and maintain fire alarm systems. As I said, it's a modular scheme with four elements to it, and companies can take that on uh, in their own time, or they can, they can aim to be accredited to the whole lot in one go. That's absolutely fine. It's based on the requirements of the British standard, that they meet those standards, and the scheme really looks at the way in which the company meets those standards, and the company's quality management systems, and the way in which they maintain their competency, complaints procedures, and so on. And we run it through four certification bodies who go out, as I say, they're UCAS accredited and they meet the standards that we set within our scheme rule. They will go out and assess the company uh, that it meets their standard and when they have agreed that it does meet the standard, they will then contact us and they will become a BAFE registered company. It requires a quality management system and it requires competency records of technical staff. If the scheme has a weakness, and I would probably say that it has, there is no means within the current scheme of assessing the individual competence of the technical staff involved. We rely upon company records and them doing what they say they should be doing. My belief at some stage in the future is that it will include individual competencies. It makes sure that they've got adequate insurance, there is an annual surveillance audit and the fees are payable through the certification body to make sure that they do what they're supposed to be doing, which is carrying out the monitoring. So, why bother joining a BAFE scheme? Two reasons, one of which is it shows to yourself that you're capable of doing what you say you do. And that often, both for employees and to the management of the company, it gives a benchmark that you can do what you say you do. But obviously, the primary importance is that you can then go out to your customers and demonstrate to them that you can do it. And, and there's a sufficient volume of companies now that many large organizations and that ranges from commercial organizations to local authorities to health authorities, now specify BAFE approval as one of their basic tender requirements. And, and my aim, my task, amongst other things, is to make that more widely accepted. And certainly, we found that the handling of complaints makes this uh, much more high profile. We've had a very large uh, systems user who had a complaint about a fire alarm company. Uh, they came to us, they were a BAFE registered company, and we considered it, we worked with the certification body. As it turns out, that fire alarm company were doing everything they should have been doing, but there was a glitch in the, the system up through the FM contractor and so on. But by dealing with it in that way, that extremely large and important end user client has now said every fire alarm and every portable extinguisher company that works on any of their sites will be BAFE approved. So we've suddenly had a rush of companies coming on board saying we need registration, we need to do it quickly. And that is developing. The insurance companies, the major insurance companies, certainly at, at, at senior corporate level, pull back and approve BAFE. Whether that really happens at grassroots level when uh, they're tendering for work, uh, I will leave you to guess, but it's part of my aim to ensure that that's happening. 
We need to work more closely with the Chief Fire Officers Association. We need to be sure, although they endorse us, they're a member of our council, that at fire assessment level, where you've got uh, fire officers out there, they need to be saying that you, Mr. Client, need to be using BAFE approvals, BAFE approved companies, and you have a responsibility under the Regulatory Reform Act to do that and to be able to demonstrate that. We are developing schemes as we go. Very shortly, within the next couple of months, there will be a scheme that will fall under the SP203 banner for companies who design, install and maintain emergency lighting systems. Uh, we work closely with ICEL, who are the, the main industry body for emergency lighting systems, to come up with a scheme and we will be promoting that. Now, many electrical contractors, very competent electrical contractors, install uh, emergency lighting schemes and they have asked us, because they sit on our council, why we need that. But there's a strong difference between competent companies who will install emergency lighting and competent companies who actually understand whether the design is correct, whether it covers the right areas, whether the battery power, whether the backup is correct, and then maintain them. Because like with all fire alarm systems, you never know whether they work or not until you need them. A lot of my background was in the security industry and you switch your burglar alarm on and off during the day. You can see whether a TV camera is working properly. But until you need a fire alarm, you don't know whether it's working. Until you need a portable extinguisher, you don't know whether it's working unless you get it properly installed and maintained. And that's where we have to get that message across to the end users who are responsible. And it is important. Several of the trade associations will now only take new companies if they are registered to both schemes. So we have a standard for you that sets out that you are a competent com company and you do what you do and we monitor that and if you're not doing it we'll take action. So in terms of benefits for your customers and ultimately I have to say as I said I was marketing director for the British Security Industry Association for five years and I had exactly the same message before the days of, of mandatory requirement the Security Industries Association that there has to be a quality mark. And if I can't demonstrate to companies who want to register to BAVE schemes that they can win more business and gain more business out of having BAVE approval, then, then I'm failing. And end user companies, whether they be commercial organizations, local government, should be recognizing, should be putting in their tender documents that there is a requirement for a BAVE scheme. No, it wouldn't be if safe if that didn't happen. So they have to understand that they have a responsibility. And companies who are BAFE approved can go out to the responsible person and say, are you meeting your responsibilities under the Regulatory Reform Act? Because if you're not, the insurance companies will know about it, the fire brigades will know about it. You have to be able to demonstrate to yourself and to your employees and to your shareholders that you meet the required standards. You are responsible. The fire brigades will no longer do that for you in most cases. If you are a specifier, lots of uh, companies, FM companies, electrical contractors use other companies. Lots of companies subcontract elements of what they do. If you are doing that, you have a responsibility for making sure that they do what they're supposed to be doing, so you have access to lists of registered companies. And I would stress again, ultimately we are independent and we provide an independent measure of competence. We are what Corgi was and GasSafe is now, a body that people can recognize. We have no vested interest other than in ensuring that the schemes work, 
and that they're regular, regularly checked and monitored to make sure they work and that they comply with the latest British standards, and that the companies who are registered do what it says on the tin. And if you can get that message across to customers, as we are doing all the time, then both the quality standards of, of fire systems will develop and it can help develop your business and build on the other standards and quality marks that you have. That is what BAFE is about. We promote quality in fire safety. They say we're introducing new schemes for emergency lighting. One of the problems that arose through the Lackanall House tragedy last year was that the fire risk assessment wasn't carried out properly. We have been working with CLG and with the institutes both to make sure that individual competencies for fire risk assessors come from, with some common standards. There are a number of extremely good schemes, the Institute of Fire Engineers, Warrington, but there is no common standard. And we are working along providing schemes for companies who provide fire risk assessment that they are competent, that they have the right insurances, that they have the right procedures, they have the right quality management systems. So that unlike today, when you can be a milkman yesterday and a fire risk assessor tomorrow, that when companies look for fire risk assessment, which is the first brick in any fire scheme, that that building has been properly assessed, that they know they're going to competent people and they're working with competent companies and we will have a scheme in place for that. And then we'll get out into other areas. We're looking at passive fire protection. You can have the best fire door in the country, but if it's put together with chewing gum and string, then it's of no value. So having the competencies for companies who install fire doors, all sorts of passive, we've been asked if we can do that. And the development of BAFE now is very much on stream to be able to do that. And in order to do that, we need companies who want to register because they see it as a value and organizations that will recognize that BAFE registered companies provide value, have value, and will meet their responsibilities. So I'm grateful to you for listening. I will willingly take any questions. I'll take this damn thing off and come and talk to you. Please have a look at our website um, and please find out. Talk to the certification bodies about us. And if we can be of any help at all, that is what we are here for. Many thanks. Are there any questions? Or if you want to grab me as I walk away, please do. The easy answer is because that was how the scheme was set up. And in order to achieve ISO 9000, we will need to change the scheme rules. There have been several discussions recently as to whether we ought to be doing that. And I think as, I'm not saying NSI is any better than SSAOB or any of the others, that if, if if the gold scheme becomes a standard, then I think we ought to be moving in that direction. The days that ISO 9000 was this huge paper trail and uh, you know you, you generated a manual this thick, I hope are now long gone. And ISO 9000 is about competence and is about making sure the company does what it should be doing and therefore is much flexible and, and therefore cheaper then I think that is maybe a way in which we ought to be going. But I think it, it is very important that the schemes are about competencies and where SP203, the, uh, the alarm system, fails at the moment, I think is to get a much stronger measure of the individual competencies of the people who work within the organization. So I think they, that, those two have got to meet in the middle, as we've done by combining the company and the technician scheme for portables. Anything else? I'm a personal service engineer. I think you mentioned that you look at the company's paperwork to see if they're 
For um, are we talking about for portables? No, no, for portables. No. We when the certification body goes in, does its annual audit, it checks on competences, it reviews what training's been done and that could be manufacturer training. Uh, but there is no external measure at the moment of competences um, for the fire alarm industry. Again, I think one of the things that we would be looking to do, um, building on this sort of national examination body, um, it's, it's, I would pretend that it's going to be easy to do, or a short-term thing, but it would be good if we could get a standard level of competency, uh, particularly for designers, um, and, and installers of fire alarm systems that could be independently trained and then have a, an independent examination process. I, I think we're some way from that. And, and so we have to rely on the certification bodies and their um, <coughs> understanding of, of, of the standards that they make sure that the individuals concerned meet the requirements of the BAFE scheme, which spells out their competence in terms of understanding of 5839 and so on and so forth. <laughs> Okay, many thanks.